Okay, well, welcome to another Alt News Media uh, interview. And uh, tonight we have uh, Jada Franson, who will be known to probably many of you. Um, Jada has been much in the news over recent times. One thing about Alt News Media is we stand for free speech. We stand for people's right to talk about the things that they want to talk about. And, uh, you know, that mean, that doesn't always mean we agree with them. It doesn't mean we disagree with them either. It just means that free, free speech is a wee bit like, um, you know, being pregnant. You either are or you're not. You've either got it or you haven't. So first of all, uh, a very warm welcome uh, to, to you, uh, Jada. And uh, perhaps, you know, we can just chat about um, the world as you see it now. Yeah, well, thank you for having me on. It's, um, it's good to have a chat with you. I think you, you hit the nail on the head there. You know, free speech really is something, it's a, it's, it's a privilege that you either enjoy or you don't. And um, at the moment, I feel like I spent the majority of last year in, uh, in prison um, for exposing some, some heinous acts. And I just feel like we're, we're seeing now, particularly with the recent incarceration of Tommy Robinson, very clear examples of, um, for me, what, what would only be described as a police state. I mean, you, you're literally under attack by the establishment and the mainstream media jointly, and they are shutting down anyone who doesn't really tow the PC line. And as you quite rightly pointed out earlier, um, I agree completely with your policy of, of free speech, whether, whether we agree or not, whether we like it or not, um, and, and even actually whether it offends us or not, because I've been offended. Um, it doesn't happen often. I'm pretty thick skinned, but I do say on the odd occasion I get offended. But that's OK. You know, it's all right to be offended. The freedoms that our war heroes fought for are more important than our feelings, I think. Oh, no, you're absolutely right. And I think, as you say, it, we seem to live in a country whereby it's the people who speak out about bad things that then bad things happen to. And, you know, obviously there's, you've gone through a lot of stuff. Uh, Tommy Robinson's incarcerated. Uh, and it seems to me that, and this is one of the things, Jedda, that sickened me the most about the Tommy Robinson scenario was that the, the many people in the media and the press almost delighted in the fact that he was sent to prison. But, but you know, what does that say about the state of the UK's press that they delight in having someone who themselves as a citizen journalist um, put away. Yeah, well, this is it. And there's such, there's such a contradiction here because especially with Tommy's case, because they, they did delight in his incarceration. And in fact, I saw the same thing when I was imprisoned, um, that the, the papers had a field day. They absolutely loved it. And they have reveled in, in his in misfortune, I guess, but it's, it goes further than just misfortune. I said, I, I remember being in a prison yard last year, around this time last year, and one of the screws was having a chat with me. He um, wasn't able to tell me his political persuasion, but he was from uh, he was from Ireland, and he basically indicated, and I think his name kind of gave away, that we might have some opposing views. But he also said that he respects my stance on, 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 you know, well, taking a stand for what I believe in. And, and I think in his former years, he might have been engaged in some level of activism. And whilst we were having this chat in a prison yard when I was about to be locked back in a cell for another 23 hours, or whatever it was, um, we discussed the fact that we are all one decision, one mistake or, or decision away from incarceration. And particularly with Tommy's case, here you have the mainstream media absolutely delighting and reveling in his incarceration, which could ultimately could, could lead to his demise, because we understand that he's in Belmarsh. It's a very dangerous place and he's a, a marked man. But the, they're reveling in the fact that he's been incarcerated for their job. <laughs> so basically what they did to him on the day that he was sentenced, which was just ask him how he felt, he had done to... Uh, some, some, some grooming gang, uh, well, now they're convicted, so we, we, can, we can call them what they are, they, they were rapists, yep. child rapists, and for simply asking that question, he was incarcerated because they felt harassed, and it was exactly the same thing for me last year. I went, um, I, I basically went and exposed these men because they were all on bail, and the local community, I felt, had a right to know that these men are all on bail. They have all 
um, taking part in this heinous crime of, 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 of kidnapping and raping a child. And I just felt like people, people needed to be informed of that. The charge sheet that they gave me on the day of my arrest was that I did harass, a cause harassment, alarm and distress to the four named gang rapists. And I just think when we get to that point where we can't even report on an issue or expose an issue um, without being threatened with incarceration, you know, we're, we're, we're not living in a free state. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of a common thread, isn't it? Because as you say, what you did and what Tommy Robinson did you know, loosely speaking, is, is kind of the same thing. And at the heart of it seems to be the establishment, the British establishment seemed somewhat concerned about the exposure of um, child rape gangs. Yeah, they, they, well, you know, for, for a start, they, we have to look at the establishment as an institution. I mean, they're separate bodies, but we know from an example, Rotherham, where I campaigned for years, Telford, I campaigned for years, I was seeing figures of, of 1,600 in Rotherham, 2,300 in Telford. That's the equivalent to two secondary schools. I mean, I, don't, I'm, I can just about remember when I was at school. <laughs> and that would be like every single child in my school and the neighbouring school having been groomed. And, and a town like Telford, you know, it's, it's shocking. And I saw even back then, the more exposure these issues were getting, um, the more that the authorities were clamping down because ultimately we were exposing the fact that the police, the social services, the local authority had all covered this up because of a wider, a broader issue was, which was that the perpetrators were largely from one particular background. Um, and so it does show some level of, well, a, a huge level of calculation, but it's, mm -hmm. Just the hypocrisy is screaming you in the face, at you in the face when you've got the mainstream media delighting in a journalist being jailed for journalism. Um, yeah. And I think I often have these debates with people on the left um, or, or who have opposing views to mine, is that they can revel in our incarceration. They can revel at uh, the persecution that I have suffered. I've had bank accounts closed. I have had... Um, property taken from me, I have been incarcerated, I've been harassed and hounded by the state, and I've been deplatformed and dehumanized. Yeah. And, and, I, and I, I see people, you know, absolutely um, delighted about this and celebrating it. But what they don't realize is, this could be them next. Yeah, um, yeah. They, have, they, have no, they have they have no no sense of self awareness at all. In fact, actually, of course, you probably came to a lot of people's attention when President Trump, famously or infamously, or however you want to describe it, um, retweeted some of some stuff that you'd been sending out. And um, I, I mean, I think obviously, Jada, going back just very briefly to that period of time, you became very prominent very very quickly because of the power of President Trump. And it obviously annoyed the, media, the establishment here enormously. And, and that's when the deplatforming then started to come a bit after that, didn't it? Because if I may say, that, that's the thing you see that bothers me the most, people being deplatformed. It's one of the reasons this platform exists, because they can't deplatform this particular platform. Um, but it bothers me that people can't speak out and it's such a fundamental thing. There's no compromise on it. You've got to be able to say whatever the heck you want. And but you, but you know, I vividly recall you being taken down and then dancing the little jig of delight, which I thought was appalling. Yeah, and and actually, they went further than just deplatforming. So Donald Trump retweeted three of my videos, and it was quite a surreal moment. I have to say, sitting at my desk and seeing those retweets. Um, and then the next 48 hours, my face was on every single news outlet across the world. It, there was a ba it was a, the banner across Sky News and there was my face and President Trump's. And it was just the craziest 48 hours I've ever had. <laughs> um, I must have given about 250 interviews. It was just, it was completely bizarre. But, you know, first and foremost, I don't believe in coincidence. And I actually don't think that it was coincidental that he retweeted those videos. Um, and I don't think that given that the tensions were so high at the time and those issues that the issues that I highlighted in those videos, I didn't make the videos by the way, yep. they put out there by, um, by, by different groups. 
There was a there was a video of ISIS throwing a homosexual off the roof. There was a video of a Muslim smashing the statue of the Virgin Mary. Um, so, but where the establishment are actually, there's a, there's a fine line right between negligence and then just all out, um, you know, you know, purposeful attack. And so, the establishment have in the past, and the media, in my opinion, have been irresponsible in their actions. So I have seen, um, I have seen headlines that have been completely false and they've, these, this information has been attributed to me and it's not correct. There's one thing being negligent and, and being misled or misunderstanding something, but the establishment went as far as standing in the comments. Now I had the likes of Therese May, uh, Boris Johnson, Sadiq Khan, everyone was talking about this, this issue. Nigel Farage was talking about this issue of these retweets. It was everywhere. Yeah. Theresa May stood up in the comments and said, she is a bigot. Sadiq Khan stood up and said, she is a racist. Now, there, I have never been convicted of racism. I am not racist, which is why I haven't been convicted of racism. And I'm so outspoken that believe you me, if I were racist, people would know about it. They know everything else that I believe in from quite vocal like that, you know? Yeah. So, they effectively didn't just deplatform me and, and remove my ability to express my opinions. They also went as far as to put me in extreme danger because at this point, the whole world was looking at my face and the statements that were being made about me weren't just irresponsible. You know, they, they went beyond that. It was a targeted attack on me without any consideration for facts. And here I am, completely deplatformed. I was then, uh, after Theresa May asked Donald Trump to take the tweets down and he told her to go away and focus on the terrorism in London, which I thought was yeah. great. Um, yeah. The only way they could get the tweets taken down was to get Twitter to disable my account. And um, of course, Zuckerberg released a statement a couple of months ago, in, I think it was April, um, in which he said, I'm now I'm banned for life from Facebook under the dangerous individuals policy for proclaiming a violent and hateful mission, which again is nonsense. But yeah. I guess these people can say what they like about the likes of you and I or, or others who might speak out without any fact checking. Doesn't matter whether it's fake news or not. Um, and that, that is fake news. I've, I've, I've never been convicted of violence. And, but they get away with it. And so you know i fear that we are we are going into very very dangerous territory and those who are brave enough to, to keep their head or poke their head above the parapet um can expect hardship i've witnessed that firsthand yeah well, i mean as we we were saying just before we, we came on air um i interviewed a leading irish uh independent journalist Gemma O'Doherty a couple of days ago and Gemma just had both her YouTube channels struck down um, in the same in the same way um, Jada as, as, as you've been struck down as in the same way as so many so I see this happening all around a battlefield absolute carnage whereby prominent fearless voices um, mostly on the right but some on the left as well because as you say they don't care they'll take out anybody if they don't say the things that need to be said, uh, are just being essentially erased. So, so what does that mean for you then? So you can't be on Twitter, can't be on uh, Facebook. Um, I guess YouTube's banned, is it? So wh 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 where are you going to be, Jenna? What, what, what lies in the future for you? Well, I do have, um, so I'm, I'm stubborn, which is, which is a good trait in this, yep. in this uh, cause, and, and obstinate, and I will not give up, you know, we always say that no surrender is, was the cry and it will remain the cry. I mean, it has to remain the cry because the way I see it, they, the state actually have, the state have always been under the impression or the opinion that if they push us, if they push us and push us and push us, they've been pushing me for years. They're doing the same thing with Tommy Robinson now. If we incarcerate these people, if we take their, if we take their houses from them, I lost my house in England. If we take away their income, if we deplatform them, we platform them dehumanize them because yeah. you know once you the world revolves around social media that's a fact politics yeah. revolves around social media and, and and i got this many years ago which was how the movement i used to be affiliated with was able to gain so much prominence is because i understood the um the the necessity for the use of social social media and so when that's when you're deprived of that 
it does it does ostracize you and um, but as stubborn as I am I um, have some very ex exciting new projects I, I just refuse at this stage to give up and it actually makes me more determined because if I look at what I've experienced over the last five or six years and the sacrifices and, and, the, and the hardship you know I'm not one I don't wallow I don't believe in wallowing mm. but it's been tough I've had six years at but what it's done is it's toughened me up to the point where when I woke up in the morning and saw that Zuckerberg had put out this statement calling me a dangerous individual, and again, I was all over every national newspaper, I just kind of shrug and say, okay, you know, and just get on with my day. Like, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't hit me anymore. So now they've toughened us up, and we're all, I, there's a lot of us working on networks to avoid any further deplatforming. So... Mm -hmm. uh, I have my own platform now, which is jadafranson.online. That is essentially my own platform. People can come on there. They can't be removed. They won't be censored. And they, that's the way to stay in touch with me. And I've been a bit quiet recently because I have just got off license. I got off license on the 10th of July. And before that, I was under... Just, just, in, time, just in time for the 12th of July then. Yeah. Absolutely. And it was the first 12th that I've experienced. And I have to say, I've been trying to get to Northern Ireland. They, they banned me. I was in, in jail the year before. They banned me the year before that. Um, I was on bail the year before that. So they were just... They weren't letting me experience the 12th. And I had the most fantastic time. It was just... It was an experience I'll never forget. And I'm, I almost had this feeling on the, on the 13th. Like, what do I do with my life now? <laughs> you know, that was just so enjoyable. All I can think about is next year. Um, so it was great. But I have a lot of exciting projects coming up. There are a couple of books being released. There's a big me media product, uh, project that I'm working on with some other people. And again, it's all, about, it's all about giving people a platform. It's all about getting people's voices heard. And um, I think that's the most important thing. I've always said that unless you cross the line and are inciting terrorism, yeah. you know, I, I respect people's, um, I respect people's different, view, you know, opposing views. I, I, the world would be so boring if we all agreed. It would, yeah. it, and, you know, people have different religious views. They have different political views. We should be able to voice them, provided we don't cross a threshold of inciting terrorism which is really it seems to me that the only people i've seen that have been given the right to keep speaking out freely and keep um preaching hate are those who who are promoting yeah, yeah you're, you're absolutely, you're absolutely you're right, right yeah? yeah i mean you mentioned facebook there a minute or two ago i mean facebook allows um the likes of um, hamas and uh, other uh, terrorist uh, fronts if not outright terrorist groups, to, to, to publish whatever they want, seemingly yeah. without impunity. So it's, it's really strange, isn't it? That the, um, but, but I think something you said there, you know, you, you, what you've gone through over the last six years and, and, and the whole, the other thing being that social media is just crucial because we live in that age. Um, and I think, Jedda, back in 2016, whenever we had Brexit and we had Trump, the big social media giant suddenly woke up and thought, what the, you know, we got to stop these people because yeah. some of us become pretty adept at using social platforms and recognizing that, you know, a tweet can get to, a tweet can get around the world before, you know, it sort of people can blink. So I think that that was the moment of recognition that, God, we mustn't allow these kind of things to be um, people like us to be able to get our opinions out. And ever since they've gone about the deplatforming. And, you know, so that's why I think, you see, I, I resent the fact that people like you have been deplatformed for the very simple reason, of maybe selfish reason, that they'll come for me as well. And yeah. also to everybody watching this, they'll come for you if, you know, if you dare speak up. And if we don't speak up, then we're, you know, we're captives. We're just slaves and we mustn't be that. Yeah, well, look, we've seen, we've seen the ramifications of these silencing techniques or these silencing tactics because so one of my, my pet hates is that when you have a disagreement with those who would have opposing views to mine, they like to band around just your, your standard 
kind of insults and slurs and one of them is racist right if you have if you have an issue with a religion that doesn't make you a racist because you know religion and race are two separate things yep. um but i have had for years I've, this this word has been banded around but we have seen how dangerous that is as a sciencing technique and, and a tactic to keep people quiet again I, I come back to rotherham in rotherham social services and the police would not they refuse to highlight the fact that the perpetrators of the grooming gangs there were predominantly pakistani muslim men because they were they were fearful of being labeled racist and so what we need to do is collectively, we do have to recognize that if it's happened to me, it could happen to you, it could happen to anyone. Yep. And we're not talking about minor issues that we can, we can just ignore. This isn't a matter of something small happening and we all still get on with our lives. We're talking about the safety of our children. We're talking about the erosion of our culture and our heritage. And so it really is it's do or die. Like we have no choice, we have to speak out. And if we do that collectively, there's suddenly these slurs and these tactics that they use to silence us. They don't work anymore. Um, but the alternative, I fear, is that if we do allow them to silence us, if we are bullied into a state where we say we, we wouldn't dare speak out because we don't want to we'd be labelled like that or be deplatformed, then what's at, what's at stake is far too great. We're talking about humans and, and, and they're, you know, our children. So for me, I think we just have to keep going. There are some platforms now that um, people are using their alternatives. So I do, remarkably, I still have a YouTube channel. Although the last video I put up, I had 300 messages from, 300 emails from YouTube. I think about 100 of them were actually came through on the 12th. Uh, whilst I was having a wonderful time. <laughs> and the same message came 300 times saying that my video has been restricted. So I kind of got the message there and feel like my yeah. video might be being restricted. <laughs> um, I also have a BitChute uh, channel which hosts videos and I, I will be completely honest, I, um, I have been bullied <laughs> by my colleagues, but very rightly so, into uh, pulling my finger out and getting onto Telegram. There is currently a Jada Francis supporters group on Telegram and um, people post to it and, and I've seen some of the stuff that's in there. I am well aware that I need to jump onto that platform and that's a way that people can see original content from me. I'm going to be launching that within the next few days. And then really, if I want to put out a live video, you know, or, or a short video and reach people in real time within minutes of something happening or something that I've yep. said, Telegram is the way forward. So, um, so once I've got that set up and it's launched, I will email everybody who has subscribed to my website. So if people want to stay in touch, they go to jadafranson.online, uh, just subscribe to the emails. Obviously, it's free. They just come through with updates. And then I will send you the link to join my Telegram app. And um, let's see how long we all last on there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but, but I think, you see, the social media genie is, is out of the box. And even though Twitter and Facebook, YouTube, Google want to want to sh keep it in, it, it can't stay in. So uh, there's all the platforms you've mentioned, Jenna. There's the, there's the other ones like Parlay. There's Gab. There's you know I know a lot of I know they're all much smaller in, in reach today. But in a year's time, in two years' time, I think you know they will ultimately the, the business model that Twitter and Facebook operate is I think it's doomed because you can't pretend to be a to be a platform and then behave like a publisher and when they take people like you out, they're behaving like a uh, publisher and, and like a uh, well they're they're making active decisions against people and on that basis you know hopefully somebody will sue them and it'll actually their share price will uh, crash and i'd love to see that you know but i would, um, I, you know, would but, I would delight i would delight in that and not because i want to see the demise of business but i just think like you say you can't pertain to be one thing and and very obviously be something else and so if you are claiming to be a free speech platform, albeit they have to have certain uh, guidelines and, and contingencies in place to prevent, because you know, you get terrible stuff on the internet involved children or, or, or terrorist groups. Yeah. I get that they need some sort of management, but when it gets to the point where if you type my name, I mean, I had a, I had a friend of mine who posted a photograph of me on Facebook and, um, 
and they got a 30 day ban just didn't type my name just took a photo with me and this is a friend they're not even politically minded right and i've had other people that have put just typed typed in jada franson or typed in tommy robinson it, there must be something in the facebook yeah. algorithm that's basically said you and i've got a very distinguishable name right it's very recognizable so if you type in Tommy Robinson, you type in Jane France and click publish or click send whatever to Facebook post, yeah. um, the, the algorithm picks it up and bans you. And, and I just think, how did we get that? How have we got that far? It's Orwellian. The, the truth is, it's absolutely 1984. The, 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 you, you said this earlier, Jada, it's dehumanizing selected targets. Yeah. And, and from platforms who say, by the way, you mustn't use language that dehumanizes people. So, uh oh, bit of a problem there. But nonetheless, that's what they do. So, yeah. no, I, I think it's appalling. And that's why I think at the very heart of everything that we should be doing is preserving the right of people to just say what they want. And another thing, kind of touch on, you mentioned hate speech. And, and the, the fact is that, you know, everyone's entitled to their point of view. But I think there are people, particularly on the left, who want to close down all other voices because hate speech equals stuff they don't want to hear. But that's, that's infantile as well as being tyrannic, tyrannical, isn't it? It is tyrannical. And the, the thing I've just been, so I, I went on trial within the last few months. Um, I've just been on trial in Northern Ireland for two separate um, offences. I gave a speech outside City Hall yep. a couple of years ago now. Yep. Um, Time flies when you're incarcerated and having fun, but um, not at the same time. But I was, I was, so I was convicted of hate speech for that. And I also filmed a, a video outside of Peace War. And I filmed this video outside of Peace War in Northern Ireland, not to speak about anything that had happened in Northern Ireland, but to say that in my opinion, and I made that very clear, that in my opinion, we will have these structures, we will have divisions on the mainland in the future. Now, it yep. was my opinion, and people are willing, people are... are um, able to agree, disagree, to, you know, take offence if, if they choose to. I mean, there was nothing, you know, particularly offensive in there. I just said, I think this is what's going to happen. So, but I was, so I was on trial. I was one of four defendants. There were three men on trial with me. Um, quite outrageously, the judge dismissed the three men and uh, acquitted all of them and got me guilty on approximately 10 counts of hate speech. Mm -hmm. And... What it boiled down to was an opinion that I gave about a peace wall and even more worrying, even more shocking was that the speech outside City Hall, I quoted something that I, uh, I quoted something from the Quran, which is the um, Islamic yeah. religious texts. And um, now I must say that what I quoted from the Quran, when I first read it in the Quran, I was shocked when I read it and I thought it was hateful, but I didn't write it. Right. So it shouldn't be me. I just read what's in there. That book is readily available for people to purchase in, in you know, bookstores. I've been given copies. I was given copies of it in jail. I've been given copies yeah. of it at Darwa stalls. So really the author is, is Allah and, and not me. I read what he allegedly wrote and I was convicted for it. And so they're not even really trying to justify what they're doing. Like there, there's no, there's no justification in that. It's just yeah. an absurdity. And you're right. It's all it is, is look, we don't like this. We don't like what she stands for. We don't like what he says. We don't like what they collectively might come together and expose. So let's shut them all down. And I can't stress enough how mm. important it is for, for people now, not, not in a year's time or when they've, you know, the school holidays are finished and everyone's had a nice summer. Right now, just do what you can, whether it's signing a petition or, um, you know, just just highlight the issue um, and raise awareness. I think one of the things that disturbed me most about what happened to you here in, in, in Northern Ireland, which is where I am, is... Uh, in, in a sense, Northern Ireland is, is actually the consummate totalitarian little state because we have a politicised policing. We have um, a very unusual political caste, including convicted uh, uh, terrorists, as you know, bombers, etc. They're just the normal political landscape here. So the fact that you were singled out in a country that's got 
like an old Bailey bomber running around the place masquerading as uh, as someone we should listen to. It, it's quite, it's, well, it, it didn't surprise me at one level, Jetta, to be honest, but only because I was one of those who back in 1999 stood against the Belfast Agreement, stood against all the wrongdoing that happened here. And your point about peace walls is so spot on. We should fully, no, no society should understand more than the one that I live in 24 seven, that you know, if you don't deal with things, then things like that are inevitable consequences. And yeah. England will not be immune. Um, yeah, and, and it's already, look, without the walls, we've already got division and we've already got, we've, we have the blueprint for, for civil, civil war, civil unrest, because we've, our government has enabled, on the mainland, our government has enabled us to, or en enabled people coming into our country to colonise areas and to form ghettos and, and no-go zones. And, you know, Northern Ireland is a very unique place and I'm, I am I feel very privileged actually that I live, I now live in that part of the UK and it really is for me the last stronghold of Britain like it the, the mainland unfortunately is largely it's gone it's fallen we have a we have a Muslim mayor who has you know sort of open he's openly stood on platforms with Islamic terrorists and like you say when you've got terrorists holding positions of power or those who are rubbing shoulders with them no. Where where does that leave us all? You know who's governing us? And so, I do think that Northern Ireland, in its in its the fact that it is so unique and the history of it, we should be learning from that. We should be learning um, from the divisions. And I think the fact that I was just pointing out that I foresee that happening on the mainland and those peace walls being required, I foresee a whole lot worse, I really do. And I, and I do firmly believe that Northern Ireland will be turned to um, for, for help. But, um, you know, the difference in size or scale makes no difference. Yeah. It, the mainland hasn't suffered. You know, I'm, I'm English. Um, we haven't suffered. We haven't known, we know very little, even, even growing up, we were taught very little about the conflict in Northern Ireland. Yeah. And so, I find when a country hasn't suffered within recent generations, so we, we, we fought the two world wars and we won. Yeah. Um, if you look at, across, across the waters at places like Poland or Hungary, you look at parts of Europe that have, within a generation, have lived under extreme oppression. They've lived under communism, under, you know, these people, you can, you can see it on their faces, you can feel it. They've been through such suffering and that's why now they will protect their rights to the death because they appreciate how quickly they can be removed and they remember when they didn't have them yeah. see on the mainland we haven't had that and so i do think that they were making an example of me in northern ireland i guess um yeah, yeah. It was, it, essentially uh, some may have seen it as a show trial um, yeah, I, I'm very familiar with the media reporting on it. I mean, again, in a country that has seen mass murderers um, con in, in, um, installed as deputy first minister, uh, in that sort of a country, um, and, and hailed as a peacemaker, and then you, for, for saying the relatively innocuous things that you said, turned into the most wicked person ever. You gotta wonder about the sort of society, you know, the sort of society we we have become to in a different way than, than in England, um, for sure, Jada. But I think the important thing is ultimately that um, resilience, the, the the Northern Ireland expression, no surrender, is quite a good one. Never give up and keep on going. So, what, so just to bring things to an end, can perhaps again for the benefit of all those watching this, can you just remind them how they can um, get in contact with you, follow you, find out what you're doing just just go through the different um ways they can do that again yeah sure so um as i said before the youtube channel remarkably is still in existence although it's under extreme restriction um you can find me on bitshoot you will be finding me on telegram very shortly i have um i have been a bit lax with telegram because i simply i spent last year in prison and i came out and i was deplatformed from facebook and so social media has changed a lot in that year so I'm getting to grips with Telegram. I'm making excuses for myself now, people, but I'm getting to grips with Telegram. I'm launching a page on that soon, and it will be me 
um, speaking directly to people. So the way to, 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 to stay in, on, on top of all of that is just to go onto one platform, which is jadafranson.online. Um, you can go on there, it's my website, there's content on there from me, videos, articles, um, and you can sign up to my emails, of course it's free, so sign up, subscribe to my email bulletins and I will stay in touch with you all. And that is the way to beat the, the big tech social media bullies who I agree with you, I think they, they're on borrowed time, people have had enough of their... Um, of their tactics. So stay in touch with me at jadafranson.online and there's plenty more to come. Right. Okay, Jada, can I wish you every best wish for the future? Thank Thanks for taking the time to spend with us this evening and uh, we'll all catch up with, uh, with everyone in our next, uh, in next uh, Alt News Media podcast. Bye for now. Bye-bye.